Well, we're here from the RRS meeting in Fort Lauderdale this year, and um, this year we have the great honour of being able to talk to the recipient of the inaugural Osborne Award, um, Dr. Mary Katrin Vosnan. And I'd like to um, give her the chance to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about um, the work that she's been doing. So, good morning, Mary Katrin. Would you like to um, tell us um, where you're working now and maybe just give uh, everybody a brief idea of um, the area of research that you're in? Yes, thank you very much. Um, well, I'm uh, now working in uh, Lausanne, Switzerland at the Schuf, and my main focus uh, is around studying normal tissue toxicity in order to improve the quality of life of cancer survivor. So we did quite um, different kind of strategies, but uh, I'm sure we're going to talk about that in more detail. Yeah, so um, one of the things you talked about um, in your address um, to this year's meeting was following in the footsteps of um, past researchers and you also um, gave a very touching uh, thanks to your own family for the support they've given you. I was wondering if you could start by just telling us a little bit um, about how important that support's been to you um, and the support of those sort of pioneering researchers in your area. Well let's start with my, my family first perhaps because um, you know when you are living um, with the scientists, it can be sometimes uh, pretty, pretty tough, um, especially for my daughter when she was uh, a, a young girl and that I was uh, working quite hard. Uh, you know, when you were in a lab, you have to go to check uh, your experiments that are ongoing over the weekends, <laughs> over the holidays. So she has been supportive. Uh, she joined a lot. She also helped mm -hmm. sometimes, so um, I think it's uh, it's really really important to have people around that to understand that you need to spend a lot of time on making your work, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a great support to 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 have them. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Yeah, Regarding um, the mentors and the previous researcher, I think it's a uh, really really important for when you were starting why when you were starting at, as a young researcher to have access to all the work mm -hmm. and the experiments that have al already been done because you are learning a lot about uh, what you want to do and where you can go to mm -hmm. find some new uh, uh, um, development from from the past experiments it just not really optimal to redo always the same thing mm -hmm. and, and have the uh, uh, um, same kind of results, even if the uh, technology is changing so mm -hmm. much nowadays. So the technology gave us the opportunity to go quicker, mm -hmm. that's for sure, to go forward. But I think that uh, for a researcher, the main point is to ask the right question. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it was a touching tribute, and I think it was—I think it really resonated with the audience. And part of the reason um, for the award is to recognise um, researchers who are in the middle of their career, um, but have really started to make um, a real contribution that's um, able to really change the way things are done in the radiation research field. So, I was wondering if you'd like to give um, our viewers a little bit of an idea of um, the area of research that you're in, um, in terms of. Uh, what you've, you've spent the past few years working on. Um, the area you talked about in your address was the um, flash radiotherapy technique, and I was wondering if you could give a little bit of an introduction as to how that works, um, and maybe how you sort of um, came upon the ideas. Um, so your, your question does uh, <laughs> include quite a lot of Sorry. different <laughs> things, so I would try to, 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 to give different answers. Um, well, the, my, my research topic has always been around uh, normal tissue toxicity. So as soon as I started with my master's degree, um, I, I fell into that topic mm -hmm. and had really is a nice opportunity to, to, to meet incredible people mm -hmm. with a lot of um, knowledge, with a, a lot of enthusiasm, which uh, makes you like um, uh, it's a very important field to go. 
Um, so in, in this uh, um, early years, uh, I had uh, really uh, uh, the connection with basic researcher as well as clinician. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it was really interesting to be able to communicate with uh, those two different kinds of people. Then moving forward and being able to start with my own group and start with exactly what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. I tried to um, include some new uh, uh, approach uh, for, for the research and uh, uh, mainly uh, genomics mm -hmm. and pr proteomics approach. Um, and, and this was quite, quite interesting. This mm -hmm. gave us very nice results we identified signaling pathways. We were able to modulate those pathways. And then after that, to transfer that mm -hmm. into the clinic. Yeah. So that, that's important. At that time, I was working at Gustave Roussy, uh, which is an anti-cancer center in, uh, near, near to Paris. And uh, the connection with the clinician was also very, very important. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the base of my work, I, I, I would say. I think maybe that's one thing that some, um, r as researchers, we can get very focused on our work in the lab and having that interaction with the physicians and the patients really brings to the fore that balance between um, radiotherapy to control tumours, but also considering um, you know, the patient's quality of life and well-being sure. and, and really keeping in mind the tension between trying to control the tumour but trying to reduce the normal tissue toxicity. So yeah, yeah it sounds yeah. like that's been a really important yeah. and, and also being, um, uh, the, the lab was always embedded into a, a, a clinical department, your radiation oncology mm -hmm. department, gave us the opportunity to have access to clinical samples mm -hmm. and to patient samples. And, and this is a re really, really a, a strong impact to the research because then from these clinical uh, uh, samples, we've been able to develop very uh, uh, optimal and accurate preclinical mm -hmm. models to ask very uh, precise questions in addition to the cognitive mm. uh, pathways. So from this initial um, uh, landscape, I would say, uh, between uh, a biology, molecular biology, uh, a clinic, uh, all uh, a focus to uh, uh, radiation therapy, radiation oncology, mm -hmm. I I had the opportunity to, to, to meet some other people, including physicists, mm -hmm. which is another aspect of uh, radiation oncology mm -hmm. that does not happen in any other discipline, That's you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Radiation oncology is biology, medicine, physics, and it's really the, the only place where this multidisciplinary approach can uh, mm -hmm. uh, be, be developed in fact and this uh, gave me the uh, opportunity to meet uh, Vincent Favaudon mm -hmm. who is initially a physicist but is working in biology and Vincent is working at the Institut Gustave Roussy. He was mainly working with uh, strange experimental LINAC mm -hmm. at that time uh, and he was focusing on uh, DNA damage, DNA repair, chromosomal um, uh, uh, stability, and uh, chromatin. And I was already a specialist of the normal tissue toxicity. So I had several models, mm -hmm. developed several models in different organs, the gut, the skin, the lung, the brain. Mm -hmm. And we got in contact. We got in contact together, and he was just wondering, well, what do you think uh, if we discuss together of what we could do, and uh, would it be possible to set a model, uh, a specific model to, to, to work with? And, and then, well, we, we became friends, mm -hmm. very good friends. We had a lot of um, talks in many situations and he, he just um, told me what why don't we try to um, 
irradiate an animal with my LINAC. Mm -hmm. This uh, 4.5 mev LINAC. I think that it, it, it highlights the interaction between sort of developing technologies even if we don't quite know what we're going to do with them yet and then once we have the technology it gives us a chance to try things that we never would have thought possible and that really sounds like that coming together of the new technology, the, the new ideas, the hypotheses that you generated sounds like it gave the perfect opportunity to, for everything to come together exactly. and just provide that, that perfect moment for the idea to come together. It was exactly the, 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 from both sides a sort of curiosity. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Vincent had the beam, uh, I had the models. Let's share the idea and try to make it uh, together. And well, let's see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. In fact, our hypothesis was really that this kind of beam was not generating uh, much chromosomal remodeling. Mm -hmm. And because of that, could be safe for the normal tissue. Mm -hmm. So that's what was the basic idea. So, so, so would you be able to explain um, what about the experimental LINAC um, is different? What, what is it that we're actually um, changing in terms of the radiation exposure that produces these results? Well, it's um, conventional linear accelerator section, but with a high power supply. So the difference is in the power mm -hmm. of the electron that are delivered in very high speeds, so mm -hmm. very short period of time, and that's the main difference. So it means that today there is no clinical machine that is able to achieve such a dose rate. Mm -hmm. There is some experimental um, uh, uh, machines that are dedicated to physics experiments, plasma experiments, for mm -hmm. instance, laser experiments that can do similar uh, dose rates and also the proton therapy, mm -hmm. especially the pen pencil beam scanning in which the dose rate of, of delivery is uh, uh, at very high dose rate. So you mentioned in your talk that the dose rate, um, you're looking at 50 gray per second, yeah. is that right? Yeah. So that sounds very high and I think um, that, that difference in scale between traditional conventional radiotherapy um, and this very high dose rate exposure um, seems to be sort of critical to the effect that you're seeing. And I was wondering if, um, if this could in turn be integrated with other advances. So a, as you mentioned, the protons, what about heavy ions plus high dose rate? Um, do, do you think that we can combine several of these different approaches to further optimize um, the approach? Oh, well, combine them, I don't know. But perhaps like for heavy ion, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the dose rate can be scaled up mm. uh, to, to the level we, we have with this, this experimental Linux. Mm -hmm. So um, then afterwards, would we need to combine them? I, I, I'm really not sure. Mm. I'm really not sure. I would, I would say that it's a bit early mm -hmm. to, to think about that and that probably uh, the, the different kind of uh, um, uh, irradiators that we do have and, and possibilities that we do have now uh, will enable us to answer to very fundamental biological questions mm -hmm. and then to, to push the discipline towards something more safe mm -hmm. and more efficient. So the protocols you mentioned um, in your talk talked about um, how we were able to reduce the normal tissue toxicity, reduce um, the sort of fibrosis effects, but you were still able to achieve um, the tumour control. Yeah. And so I was wondering, um, the question that I had and probably everybody else has is why? What is the, um, I mean, this is maybe a, a, still an early question, the but, same one. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but you know, can you give us some of your, maybe some of your early thoughts about really what the biology is that underpins the high dose rate um, effectiveness? Well, I, I, I mentioned several, um, several points. Um, one of the, um, perhaps the, the easiest one is uh, a, a, at the chemical level and uh, uh, related to the consumption of oxygen mm -hmm. that might be different in the normal tissue and in the tumour. Mm -hmm. 
and um, it's uh, probably one of the um, um, easiest hypotheses we can uh, uh, have. Mm -hmm. Well, easiest is probably not not the right word because mm -hmm. it's going to be very difficult to um, um, uh, be able to experimentally assess this hypothesis, mm -hmm. especially in vivo. Perhaps we can go on in vitro, but in vivo it's going to be, I think it's going to be very difficult to validate this hypothesis. So this is one uh, chemical uh, explanation, because we think that from the physics point of view, there is no real uh, difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, f the physical step should be the same. Mm -hmm then the chemical step that involve oxygen is perhaps very important. So that's one hypothesis. At the biological level, um, there is a quite provocative uh, idea mm -hmm. that uh, perhaps normal tissue are protected because they are containing stem cells mm -hmm. and tumor are not. Mm -hmm. So could it be um, a way to demonstrate that there is no cancer stem cell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's a propagative idea. Yeah. <laughs> it is. We are far away from that. Yes. <laughs> but no, it, it's intriguing to think on those different levels, the, the physical, the chemical, and the biological, to know, you know which, which part of this process is being altered and whether the flash RT is producing different chemical results in the cells or whether the body is just responding in a different way um, to that. It's insult. probably um, both. Yeah. It's probably on both sides. There is difficult, um, different uh, uh, um, interaction uh, of the electron with the matter mm -hmm. and then the matter is producing a different response. Mm -hmm. So if you'd be able to tell us just a little bit about um, your next step, so what's the future hold um, both oh, well. for yourself and for this research? Well, um, I think we do have a lot of work to do. <laughs> probably um, we will need to, well, probably my, my entire career won't, won't be sufficient <laughs> <laughs> to, to go through. Um, what, what we need to, 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 to know now is uh, uh, can we apply this protection to various uh, normal tissues? That's what we are currently doing. Uh, we, we saw it in, in the lung, we saw it in, in the hematopoietic system. We are working on, on the brain, uh, on the skin, on the gut, which are very important uh, organs. We are trying exactly as, you're, uh, as you said to understand what's the molecular basis of differential effect between the normal tissue and, and the tumor. And that's really uh, an important um, uh, uh, um, parameter. Uh, we are trying to investigate that question using different models of tumors mm -hmm. with uh, known and well characterized stem cells inside mm -hmm. the tumors. So uh, it's, uh, it's uh, the way we are uh, going. And of course, the very latter step would be to go to the clinic. Mm. So is it possible to transfer this kind of technology, which is at the moment very preclinical, for the patient benefits, and that's really um, uh, the aim of the of the work. Sure. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, I think it's really exciting work, and you're a very well deserving winner of this award. And um, I'd like to thank you very much for talking with us today. Thank you very much. Thank to you. you.